So Peter, I've known you a long time as a professional colleague and it's lovely that you've finally been able to come to the centre and experience a program. So how has it been for you this week? Um, Patria, it's been fantastic. I know we've been talking about me coming to a centre or coming down and doing one of your programs for a long time, but one of the one of the big things I've gotten so far out of this is it's not very often that people take the time to actually dedicate five days just to themselves. Mm. Like I think day two, I was having a massage with Michelle, and I was lying there two thirty in the afternoon thinking, I'd really should I really it should work. be at work. This is my busy work time. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually been really good for me just to disconnect and you know spend that time. Yeah. Down here. Yeah, exactly. And you're right. So few people take time out to reflect on how am I living my life and am I living the life I want to live and if not, why not? And what am I going to do about it? So well, good for you that you created the time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think um, it was a combination of things, I think, really. I think, you know, everybody gets in that busy cycle with work and, you know, and my, my catch cry this year has been, you know, work-life balance that everyone's been talking about yeah, for a long yeah. time. But I've always sort of hesitated or thought that my work-life balance was pretty good where I've realised that really it's an area that I could do with a bit of um, bit TLC. Of sprucing up. Bit of sprucing up. So <laughs> I think coming to coming to the, the Heal Your Life program has been great mm. just for me to really evaluate all areas of my life, mm. um, you know, where I can improve in communication, mm. for instance. Yeah, yeah. And has anything stood out for you in particular this week? Things that are like light bulb moments or? I've, I've had quite a few light bulb moments. So you're allowed to have more than one light bulb moment. You can have as many as you like. <laughs> so I particularly loved your concept of the four C's. Mm. So number one is? Regain control over our response. Regain control. Yeah. And when um, Tammy first started talking about that, I thought, regain control, that doesn't sound very, very... A peaceful way to go about it doesn't sound like you're in the flow it doesn't sound like you're in the <laughs> flow but when she explained further it's not there's so many things that happen in our life that are out of our control mm. it's more around what we can control is our response yeah and i thought that was a great refresher mm. in fact that's really the only point of power that we have of course you know we know appalling terrible dreadful horrible things happen to gorgeous terrific people and the only thing that we do have any power over is how we're going to choose to see that mm. and how we're going to choose to respond to that. Otherwise, we're just a helpless victim mm. of whatever happens to us. And none of us like to feel a victim. And it's very disempowering to feel that way. And that was so that was a great realisation, just mm. that, that it, how empowering that actually is, that, that we do have a choice in how we respond to situations yes. by developing our awareness and... One of the questions I did put to you, but I might ask you about that in another segment, was about the difference between mindfulness and meditation. And meditation. Mm. But we can talk about that in a moment, maybe. Um, the other thing that I've really enjoyed getting back to the basics with is practicing meditation as well. Mm. You know, that's a practice that I've done on and off over the years, mm. but I don't think I truly got... I know this sounds really silly as a naturopath. I don't think I really got the tremendous health benefits, mm. Mm. the tremendous health benefits, benefits. And you were talking about today about um, the effects of meditation on our epigenetics. And mm. a lot of my patients are okay with this concept now of it's not necessarily our genes that are out the problem, it's the epigenetics, the environment that our mm. genes live in, yeah. which includes diet and lifestyle, but mm. our thought and our stress, the effects of mm. the stress on those epigenetics but how meditation really helps to reverse mm. a lot of that mm. well last century you know it was so often thought that all diseases were genetically determined and if we could just find the problematic genes and snip them off get rid of them mm. Mm. Uh, then everything would be terrific we'd have no disease we could get rid of the depression gene the anxiety gene the breast cancer gene this century, though, we know from epigenetics that it's the environment around the cell that is telling the gene whether to express or modify or suppress. And over that, we have a lot of control, but we don't have any control over which genes we were dealt as um, babies. But we certainly have, to a large extent, there are some chemicals in the environment that 
you know, you and I've got DDT in our bodies, not yep. that we've ever willingly ingested it or taken it on, but it's just ubiquitous now in the mm. environment. Whereas, you know, we do have control over eliminating a lot of the things that are in our environment that are problematic. And we, we've become terribly dulled down with food mm. and mm. very used to second-rate food, really, that's been in the cold storage for a year or two before it comes onto the market. And a lot of people aren't aware of this. Yeah, well, I wasn't aware of those time frames that Patria was mentioning today. You did a fantastic talk this afternoon on nutrition and um, of the microbiome, which, you know, us naturopaths love anything to do with the gut. Yeah. Um, and you were saying there about, like, that some of our food might get stored for up to three years. Yeah, four, we... three, four years. Yeah, incredible. Our, fr our, fresh fruit, our fresh fruit and your fresh fresh fruit fruit and vegetables. And vegetables. Even your beautiful cherries that look like they've just been picked have been dumped in these chemicals, which are never washed off, mm. so they can go into cold storage for years before they come onto the market, mm. so that they don't spoil in any way. Yeah, incredible. But we could be eating food that's full of nutrition. Mm. The food's not so nutritious now. And of course, most food is picked before it's ripe. Yeah. And yet most nutrition comes into food in the last 48 hours of ripening. So, so all the food that gets, gets picked and then stored or yeah. taken away, we're going to be losing nutrition by the handful. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess um, you know, from, a, from the epigenetic point of view with meditation, with... Um, control, like learning to how to control our emotional responses rather than, you know, be the victim of what life mm. challenges. Because one thing I've realised also this week is that a lot of people have a lot of trauma, a lot of stress in their lives, and that we're all human as well. Everybody has a story. Yeah. So learning to manage our stress response, you know, in this day and age, mm. I think you were talking about the bushfires, about mm. COVID, mm. that our nervous systems are just so primed and so yeah. turned on all the time. Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, something a lot of people don't understand is that you never deal with the emotions when you're going through the trauma. Yeah, that, well, I've, I found that amazing no. because I, I, I thought maybe, you know, because I often see a pattern with patients that while they're caring for their sick mother, they'll be fine, mm. but then, you know, three months or six months yeah. later, but you're saying it can be even longer. Oh, absolutely. I mean, children are very good at parking grief mm. for decades mm. Mm. because they don't know how to deal with it. Mm. Uh, people say that they don't understand death before they're seven. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I think very young children get death, but they don't know how to deal with the emotions of it. And, of course, those emotions change as a child grows up because... In the teen years, you miss that parent. In the, your wedding day, in when you have children yourself, you know. So it's always kind of there, and you grieve at different times. I grieve for the grandmother the children won't ever have. I grieve yeah. for she's not here on my wedding day. So we grieve throughout time. But a lot of people are very good at parking it for a long time because they find those emotions very painful, mm -hmm. very uncomfortable. I'm not going there. And they keep on filling up life with busyness and career and other things to distract them from going near what's unprocessed. And the, the fact is there's a tremendous amount of trauma everywhere now in our communities because of the way we've got our lives organised, you mm. know, that we've all got these phones and mm. everyone expects an immediate response, response. from us. and. You know, most um, households are geared to two incomes, so there's not the flexibility of one parent being available, more readily available for the kids. So the, we've changed things a lot, even in the space of my 70 years, uh, from food right through to our relationships and how we structure our days. You know, when I was a kid, 12 o'clock on a Saturday, this atmosphere came over the community as all the shops shut. It was amazing. I can, I can still remember, remember. I can still remember the feeling of it. The feeling, like the shops were shut, and it was like everyone just calmed well, down, down. And you and you and you the had weekends. Barbies, you were hanging out at home. And you the were, weekend seemed to go on forever. Forever. Didn't it? And it seemed a long time before you were yeah. back at school. Yeah. But not anymore. Now shops are open all the time. Mm. We can do these things, and, and we love the convenience of mm. doing that. But when are we getting the downtime? When are we getting the processing time? 
Words like convalescence have gone completely out of our vocabulary. Mm. And yet convalescence was that time where you physically recovered, where you emotionally, psychological, psychologically integrated what had just happened mm. to you, so that you ended up having a story instead of still living in the story. Yeah. Yeah. And people are forever in their story because they haven't had time to process the emotions so that it's kind of integrated so that we're not still reacting from the wounds of the past because they've been woven into that story of ours, but we're not living in the story all the time. So when, so when um, you're in a relationship or you're talking with your partner and something happens that might trigger something from your past, yes. and I know we've possibly all had those experiences oh, where we may have overreacted or said, you know, said things we really didn't mean at the time, that in, in hindsight we feel terribly guilty about because we think that really didn't warrant yeah. that sort of overreaction. Yeah. But you're saying that could be most likely due to past trauma or past stress that we haven't dealt with. Absolutely. So it's not about beating yourself up. Mm. It's to recognise this is coming from an unmet emotional need mm. that might go way, way, way back to our earliest days and that we gradually you know it's a process of waking up and understanding why you are the way you are mm. taking responsibility for that and then moving through the kind of practical things that we teach people you know things like the language if we only say that was I'm, another I've, I've got so yeah. many light bulb moments but that <laughs> I was can't, another should one try but never if only impossible always that little group of words are the words of reaction. Mm. So if we can train ourselves, I'm never going to say those words, but with consciousness, we clean. if you clean up your language, you clean up a tremendous amount. So I think everyone needs this at some stage. Yeah, I, because I, it's education about how your body works, how your brain works, how life works, and how you can navigate it in the most skillful way possible. And I think... I think um your program because we've covered so many topics we've covered how the brain works which different parts of the brain are activated in grief and trauma um, we've covered one of the exercises I love is your coming to your senses mm -hmm. exercise that you can do it's like a mini meditation yeah. if I can call it that of mm -hmm. can you how, how does that work well your body's always here mm. the brain our unconscious brain has a tendency to project into the future and tell us stories of what might happen, could happen, probably won't happen. Or we go into the past where we resent, we blame, we shame, we rewrite history, we all the things I could have said, should have said, mm. should have done, could have done. Mm. Um, so whenever our brain is in the future or telling us stories about the past, we're actually creating in that epigenetic environment a corollary to wherever our consciousness is absorbed in anxiety, fear, frustration, resentment, worry, blame, shame. And that's what we're putting into the epigenetic environment. So when, when and the um, Tammy, I think, or Margie, the, the facilitators were talking about the soup of your yes. um, emotional environment or your family environment. Yeah. And so it really makes sense that if someone's in a constantly, not creating fear for people, but if someone's constantly in a stressed state, then their cells, their genetics are being told Beyond different guard, in, beyond guard, beyond guard, all different the time. information mm. than what they should be being told where normally that stress response should turn on and then turn off. Mm. But you know, if the purpose of human existence is to relinquish everything that's become second nature to us so that we reveal and live in and experience our first nature, then we need this trauma that puts mm. us to sleep so that we can wake up and make the return journey. Because little babies, they're in the present moment. Mm. They're not lying in their cot worrying about which university they're going to go to. They're just, mm. I'm hungry, I'm happy, I'm miserable. But, you know, mm. it's instant. Mm. And then we begin to dull that down. But the thing is, babies don't know that they're conscious. Whereas adults, we can make that return journey so that we know that we're conscious. Mm and that we're making more appropriate choices and responses in our life rather than just helplessly reacting mm. from our unconscious from our unconscious and i love that i love that concept and it really seems to make sense to me that perhaps our true purpose in life is to make that as adults to become aware 
and make that return journey to our first nature. Yeah. What else is there to do? Mm. It's not about who's got the most toys. No, because in, in the end, you can't <laughs> the take The shirt has no this. pockets. <laughs> We're not taking any of it with us. And you know, I don't know about you, but what gives me joy is people recognising I've got choice. Yeah, absolutely. I don't have to be a helpless victim. I can be an active co-creator of my life. And, and health comes and with health. that as well, all yeah. aspects of our life. Yeah. And that doesn't mean, you know, I want a yacht and I want a million dollars and I want all of this stuff. It means just coming home to yourself. Mm. Mm. And what gives most of us joy is to be happy and useful. Mm. In fact, our happiness really comes from living a life that's got meaning and purpose. Mm. So that we put our head on the pillow at night feeling like, yeah. We've had a good day, we've achieved, yeah, we've, helped, today was a good we've day. helped some people. Mm. Yeah, that's what gives us joy. And Patria, the, the the program, so it's a five-day program. Five-day program, doing. yeah, it starts four o'clock on a Monday, finishes with lunch on a Friday. Uh, people, as you would have experienced, kind of looking at everyone on a Monday, wondering... Monday oh, Monday was a little bit apprehensive yeah. because you really didn't know what was ahead of yeah, you. Yeah, what's ahead of me and who are all these people and what have I got in common with them? And by now, of course, everyone's firm friends because... Yeah. You know, we have people from very diverse backgrounds. Mm, and everyone's got a different story, everyone's but everyone a has a story. story. But everyone recognises the humanity in our suffering mm. and what that private, quiet, lonesome world can sometimes be like. And that if we learn about how the body is constructed, how uh, life is arranged then we can become more skillful at navigating the challenges as they come and these are skills and that's the other the other thing that i've really it's re reopened my eyes like these are skills that we all should have mm. we should all know this this have this knowledge right from when we're little so that we can navigate that you know we have feelings mm. i love your saying mm. you know we have feelings but we're not our feelings yeah. well there's a big difference between i am angry yeah, I love that part and as well. And I feel angry. Oh, I can mm. feel it in my microbiome, my belly. I can feel it in my heart rate. Yes, my chest feels tight. Yes, this is anger. But I might not want to speak from it or act from it. Mm. But if I am angry, I may not have any filter of awareness. And it might be out of my fist or out of my mouth before I know what's even mm. happened. Mm. So we encourage, watch out what you attach, I am Two, hmm. not I am sick, I am tired, I'm bored, I'm depressed. I feel all kinds of things. Hmm. Because in time, the I am becomes your rock solid reality. Hmm. And you witness yourself moving in and out of feelings all the time, hmm. knowing that they're not who you are, but hmm. they are what you are feeling. Hmm. So it's not hmm. about denying them, suppressing them. It's about saying, yes, there you are. Um, what's it like when I'm in the presence of that feeling so that you have some awareness about it? Feel it with awareness. Yeah, where is it in my body? Yep. And then sometimes there's a fourth step of I need to go talk to someone about yeah. this or I yeah. need to get to bed early tonight or I need to soak in a bath or I need to reconnect with my counsellor or whatever it is. So sometimes there's that fourth step. But if we can witness, this is how it feels to be me feeling rage. It's okay to feel rage. This is how feeling rage feels. And it's not who I am, but it's what I'm feeling. Mm. And the thing is, you know, now so often I hear little tiny ones saying, I am angry, I am whatever. Mm. And there's no filter, there's no space. And, you know, if we can, if we can demonstrate it ourselves, because mm. of course kids don't listen to what we say, they only watch what we do. But if we demonstrate to them how to be in healthy relationship with our feelings, uh, then we, and even when it comes to depression, we can say, right now I feel depressed and I'm learning how to improve my nutrition and go for walks and manage this whole thing, but you know, don't count on me for the laughs at the moment. Mm -hmm. Then we're owning it. We're saying, it. Yep, this yeah, is, this is my reality at the moment and I'm working with it and you're not responsible for it and you're not responsible for fixing me up. That's my job. And I, that's a, a, such a good point because I think so much our, our medical system is still, we go to mm -hmm. someone, you know, even coming to see a naturopath, yeah. people come to see a naturopath wanting the naturopath or the doctor or mm -hmm. the specialist to fix their problems. Yeah. And I think um, 
this week again has been about that self-care and taking responsibility mm. for for my responses, for my reactions. Yes. Or yes, responses exactly. rather than my reaction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, if you think about the word reaction and you move the seed back to the beginning, you're back into creation. Creation. We're always either in the present moment or we're reactivating the past and living it again in the present. If we always do what we've always done. Always get what we've always got. That's the one. <laughs> now, the food The food this week has been amazing. Yeah, they do um, a great job oh, of the just, food. Everything, everything about the week has been all around self-care. There's been plenty of time to have a rest during the day yeah. or I've done some lovely walks around the town. Yeah. Um, that doesn't take long. <laughs> it doesn't take long down here. Um, One main street. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I'd, I'd definitely highly recommend this program to anyone watching and, you know, give yourself the gift of time of actually mm. going away and having five days committed just to yourself. Mm. It wasn't hard to get here. Just a short drive down that yeah. big long freeway. We meet people at the train as well and help them with their bags. And, uh, you know, we also have a lot of grants available for people impacted by the bushfires or people impacted by domestic violence. Maybe they grew up in domestic violence and that has often lifelong um, impact. Yeah. So we have some funds that enable us to subsidise people with that in their background. So, so if someone has any, any questions, they just ring, ring the office here request? Always welcome to ring us and we'll do whatever we can to get you here. Fantastic. And if anyone's got any questions and wants to ask me any more about my adventures down here at Quest, <laughs> Quest for Life, um, yeah, please get in, get in touch as well. So, Patria, thank you. Thank it's you so pleasure. much. Um, I, I, I've really enjoyed the week. I've really got a lot out of it. And I know we've still got tonight and tomorrow to go. So, yeah, yeah it's been okay. a pleasure. I've loved it. I've loved having you here. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Peter.